What's going on, Bull Runners? Welcome back to the channel. So we just got done with our event out here in Mar-a-Lago with uh, Donald Trump, and we got some big news to bring to you guys in this video. Lots of stuff happening right now. You know, I just got back from Dubai, and some of the stuff I'm going to be sharing with you here soon. But for you XRP holders, Bitcoin holders, Ethereum holders, altcoin holders, you're going to want to watch this. Comment 777 if you're feeling blessed, if you're feeling bullish, and let's run it. This is the anticipation of finally licensing a Bitcoin ETF, which I'm not as optimistic will happen overnight, but it does show you that the age of the crypto cowboy, the FTX and the Binance, those days are over. This month, in the next 10 days, they will announce M2 in Abu Dhabi, the largest exchange ever that's regulated with billions backing it and tied to huge financial institutions. Really what they're going after is Binance will probably lose half of its accounts to the new M2 because now you can go off something that the SEC is suing and yep, go yep. onto a compliant exchange yep. that's backed by billions of dollars and huge financial institutions. All right, bull runners, welcome back to the channel. So looking at the markets right now, Bitcoin sitting at $35,670, not doing too much the past week. Ethereum, same thing. Ethereum cracked $2,000, but currently it's at 1,986. XRP, not doing too hot this past week, down 7%, sitting at 63 cents. What happened? You know, why is XRP not breaking out with all this good news? Solana up 32% and Solana is just ripping, pulling a ripper Magoo. Cardano sitting at 35 cents. You know, obviously not many people like Cardano to each its own. Dogecoin not doing anything. Tron, Polygon, Polygon's moving 23%. Chainlink up 7%. These measly, easily little tiny 7% gains. When are we going to get the thousand X's that people want in these markets, right? You know, all the hopium pumps in, you got to have realistic expectations. When you see stuff like this, you know, people have been buying the news of a BlackRock ETF filing and a fake BlackRock crypto ETF filing sent the price of XRP soaring before it crashed back down. And so when we look at the XRP chart right here, we can see this wick from about 64 cents all the way upwards of 75 cents really fast when, you know, a lot of FOMO came in and then it got sold off drastically after that. So interestingly, how this happens so fast, you know, what what whales or what people were buying this that quickly? And then all of a sudden, right after that, the news, the news just hit about the fact that it was fake. Could BlackRock know something that the rest of the world doesn't? Well, obviously, they do know stuff that the rest of the world doesn't. That's why they control the media, because there's five M's when you control these five. M's, I probably shouldn't be sharing this, but, you know, I think you need to know it. When you control these five M's, you control the world. And that's the, the media, the money, the military, the medicine. And the last one is the mines. That's how you control the mines of everybody out there. And so BlackRock obviously has their hands over, you know, a large chunk of everything. And the, the media is the main one. So people have been buying this past month. You know, you see from XRP at 47 cents, running all the way upwards of 73 cents, you know, for over... How many days, guys? You know, we're looking at 18 days right here, uh, 53%. So people have been buying the rumors right now. So I wouldn't be surprised if XRP comes all the way back down to 58 cents, even comes back down within 55 cents to retest the, the Berlin Wall, as I talked about uh, in the other video the other day, where XRP struggled to break out from this, you know, since September of 2022, March of 2023. So you guys can see this massive zone of resistance uh, for XRP that could act as support. And then also you see this upward trending support line as well too. So at some point I would expect XRP to come within this range right here and I would get excited. You know, I'd probably accumulate more, but I do have a lot of XRP in my bag. You know, yes, I do hold this project again, not financial advice. Don't buy this project. Don't sell this project because you should do your own research. You're a full grown educated degenerate, just like the rest of us, right? So, you know, I'm going to be accumulating a lot of other projects that I'm going to be sharing with you over the next few weeks in the next few months. And in this video, we have a lot to unpackage with you guys. So what just happened, you know, over in Abu Dhabi? What is BlackRock doing? Well, let's dive into it. And then what's happening on the charts. So right now, we saw the RSI peak upwards of 88 right here. And the RSI is dropping back down. You know, I pointed this out several times where when we get in this period, where we are drastically over bought, we see corrections take place. Now, it doesn't mean that the price is going to come all the way back down because the corrections could be, you know, 10%, 20%, and then we continue the bullish momentum to the upside. So we need to look at other macro market indicators and other things as well to identify, you know, what is most likely 
the most likely scenario to happen next for XRP. And so the cryptocurrency exchange called M2, which received a financial services permission from the Abu Dhabi global market in August, you know, rolled out its international platform for institutional and retail investors to buy, sell, and hold custody of virtual assets. And the exchange has unveiled the M2 Earn product, which provides up to 10.5% yield on Bitcoin and Ethereum, the company said in a statement on Tuesday. So what we're going to start to see over the next few months and the next few years is the TVL, which is the total value locked, start to go up on these exchanges for people that are staking. So when we look here on the chart, you know, all chains, the total value locked right here from DeFi Llama, it says 83.68 billion at the peak, you know, is 261 billion locked up, you know, so we're about about 200% away from the peak or a, a 2x from here. And as you can see, we're also inside of this ascending triangle pattern where we see this uptrend, a flat resistance, and a rising lower trend line support and a breakout is imminent of the resistance at some point. And so we're testing the resistance right now. And on the RSI, we are you know, a little bit higher on the RSI. We're sitting at 74. But if we go back to the past, you know, during the last bull run before the total value locked absolutely skyrocketed. What happened on the RSI, you know, was something similar where we saw we went from all the way down here, you know, March COVID lows where the total value locked was only $400 million in the industry. Everyone was selling everything. People were panicking. They were freaking out. They didn't know what to do because, you know, they lost their job at McDonald's. So when the market started coming out of here, you know, total value locked started going up. So it started following along with the price action on the Bitcoin Ethereum price chart. And so when we got here on the RSI, we got to about 73 on the RSI. We saw a little dip from about 800 million in total value lock down to 718 million. So if we were to measure what that is, that's an 11% correction right there. And then we just absolutely mooned out of here. And so because the RSI gets up to 70, doesn't mean that it's just gonna come all the way back down to 30 and get into, you know, uh, oversold territory, you know, we could see something like this take place where the little correction 11% brings the RSI down to 50. But when we stay above 50 for an extended period of time, we're in a bull market. When we stay below 50 for an extended period of time, right, we're in a bear market. So when we look here, we were above 50 on the RSI until May of 2021. So the total value locks skyrocketed. It absolutely moved. And then when we went below 50 on the on the RSI for an extended period of time. That was during this corrective period where the markets had to cool off and drop down 41%. And so it took how long? It took about 100 days. So a little over three to four months before the markets finally then peaked out after that. So this was a sign right here when the RSI, you know, dropped drastically below 50, took about 100 days that the bull market was coming to a close, right? Because you don't just go from 400 million to 161 billion dollars locked away. That's a big, big jump without having some sort of correction in a massive bear market after that. And so that's exactly what we saw. Massive correction, massive bear market. And now we're breaking out of that again. And so I would expect once this breaks and hold holds as support right here, I would expect the total value lock to absolutely skyrocket over the next few years. And I'll explain why over the next few minutes. So first, let's talk about what does total value locked mean? Because in decentralized finance or DeFi, you know, the boom that took place in 2020 and then the DeFi summer, those of you guys remember that, you know, all the financial market experts have come to terms with the new type of investment that have looked for ways to measure its performance, you know, other than like market cap that you look at, uh, trading volume or like total circulating supply as well too, total value locked is one of the indicators that is popular amongst all the DeFi investors to access the overall value of the asset. So DeFi assets include, you know, rewards and interest coming from typical services such as lending, staking and liquidity pools provided in the form of smart contracts. So total value locked in staking, for example, is a particularly useful indicator for investors looking to support the DeFi platform with the highest reward. It is the total value locked in the DeFi staking protocol and represents the amount of assets deposited by the liquidity providers. And in 2022, the total value locked reached nearly 2 billion for the DeFi market, growing from 400 million in the previous two years. And then it drastically grew way beyond that for the whole industry. And so while the total value locked is simply defined as the <clears throat> total value of cryptocurrencies locked in a smart contract, there are underlying conditions that may affect the value 
of DeFi projects for this. And why does this matter? Because when the total value locked of a DeFi platform rises, it is followed by an increase of liquidity, popularity, usability, and more price action. So we can go camping on the beaches of the moon. So these factors contribute to the project's success where a higher total value lock means that capital is locked on a DeFi protocol. So people are just more bullish for the long term, right? It's simpler uh, to explain when you compare it to bonds as well too. You know, when we see an inverted yield curve inversion, meaning that the two years, the two year bond is outperforming the 10, you know, people are more bearish on the economy. So obviously when there's more income being staked away long term on uh, DeFi protocols, liquidity pools, and the industry as a whole to earn interest and APY on that, people are more bullish long term. And so you can check out uh, platforms like DeFi Pulse and DeFi Llama to give you guys an idea on the respective platforms on how much is staked away and all of that good stuff. And so which crypto has the highest total value locked? So there was an exceptional growth in DeFi summer. And at the beginning of 2020, the combined total value locked of all DeFi platforms was around 630 you know, million, according to DeFi Llama. In the first quarter of 2020, it had already reached over 172 billion in value. More than half of that was in one protocol, MakerDAO, which remained one of the most prominent protocols together with Curve and Aave. You know, Curve is the crypto with the highest total value locked in portion of the market with 9.7% of market share and 17 billion total value locked, followed by Lido uh, with 15.4 billion total value locked and Anchor at 12.6, and then MakerDAO at 11 Five. Now everyone knows what happened with, you know, Anchor with uh, Terra Luna collapse and all that stuff. But when we look at a project like Maker compared to Curve, you know, you guys can see this descending resistance right here. You know, the charts all look very, very similar because when the tides rise, so do all ships. And when they retreat, you know, everyone gets caught with their pants around their ankles. And some people are just better swimmers than others. So right here, we look at Curve, you know, or Maker on the left-hand side sitting at uh, $1,340 right now how far it is from its all-time high is about 343%. So that's a 3.4x to get back to its all-time high, but it's already broken out from this descending resistance and it's already seen its rally right now. Now, sure, this project is gonna continue to trend upwards during the rest of this bull run, but is it a good idea to be diving headfirst into Maker right now? Absolutely not. This is not a project that I think you're gonna see, you know, those, those 10, 20, 30x gains that you're looking to, you know, Buy a, buy a house or retire your family with, it's not it's not gonna happen with, with Maker. Yes, it will perform well, but it's already seen its run. Whereas you look at something like Curve, Curve is barely off of the lows right here of this double bottom trend reversal that you guys can see, where you see bottom number one, bottom number two, you see the neckline right here. You know, usually in a double bottom trend reversal when we see a break of neckline. Also, you can see this macro descending resistance from January of 2022. We're breaking that right now. So we're just on the upper echelon of that. And sure, we could draw down a little bit further down here, you know, if Bitcoin sees a sell off. But eventually, you know, I would expect a spring to come out of here for a curve as we break out of these winter uh, this winter for crypto, because we go through winter, right? Markets are falling, they're not fun. And then you're just like frozen at the bottom for a bit. Not many people are buying. People think it's, they don't think it's over. They just know that it's uh, it's winter. And then when we break out of winter, we see the first spring thaw. That's what we're seeing right now. So the first spring that's happening in these markets is all of these projects are breaking out. And so I know the impatience kicks in where you want the project that you're holding right now, which could be, XRP, you know, it could be any other altcoin. Well, the project that you're holding right now most likely hasn't had its run because the money is flowing into Solana. It's flowing into Chainlink. It's flowing into some other projects before it flows into your project. Or you just might be holding a project that doesn't necessarily rally when the rest of the markets rally because you're in some really weird low cap projects. So that's why you should subscribe to this channel, watch these videos and go to bullrunners.com so you can get our top altcoin list when that's released. But look at this with Aave. See, Aave has a very similar chart pattern. It's breaking out when this descending resistance and it's rallied upwards of $108. So most of these projects are already up. For, they've been up for a while. They've been up for, you know, over a month, almost two months, 100 plus percent for Aave. And how far away is Aave from its all-time high? So Aave is at about 600%. So that's a that's a cute little 6X away from its all-time high. I do think this project will perform well. Do I hold it? No, I don't. I believe other projects are going to outperform it. So I'm holding other projects. Now look at Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's sitting at $35,590. And it's broken out from this resistance that was in for about 200 plus days. And so a back test 
of anywhere from 33,000 to, you know, $30,000 is likely that's in the books. And all as always, we look at the RSI too, the relative strength index, we saw that the RSI was pushing upwards of 86. And so drastically overbought territory, I, I talked about this as well, too. Hopefully you guys caught that I compared that in one of the videos to the past, when you look at, you know, when the RSI shot all the way up here, you know, same, same price level, we saw a correction take place. And that correction for Bitcoin was, you know, about 9%. And then we saw it push a little bit higher in the short term right here, upwards of $25,000. And it corrected all the way down 24%. And so on our way up, we're not just going to keep shooting all the way up to the all time high, we're going to see stuff like this take place. So a 14% correction, would bring it down to roughly $32,300. 16% correction would be like $31,500. To get back down to $30,000, that is about a 20% correction. So I think Bitcoin's going to keep pushing up, but we'll see days like this and weeks like this, potentially even like a month where we just see the price kind of grind down and then hold new levels. But ultimately, I think we're pushing upwards of forty-five dollars to $55,000 before a major 40% correction takes place going into Bitcoin's halving in April. And then you got time because after that, it's like six months of consolidation, you know, when Bitcoin halves after that, before Bitcoin breaks out. Could it be different this time? Absolutely. You know, we could see Bitcoin uh, do something completely different, something nobody's ever seen before, just like what happened in 2020. Black Swan events, you know, could happen to the upside or could happen to the downside. We don't know. And so that's what makes these markets fun is the unpredictability of getting wrecked. All right. So look at Chainlink right here. I talked about Chainlink in the previous video. And sure enough, I pointed out the RSI. I let you guys know that the RSI was in overbought territory. Expect a correction. It's exactly what's happening right now for Chainlink. And comparing this, if I were to circle on the past, you know, what happened here? Well, Chainlink was in this range for an extended period of time, struggling to break out from this horizontal resistance that you guys can see at about 60 something cents. Once Chainlink broke, it didn't just struggle to break through it. It's, it blew right through it. Similar to what happened in October, Chainlink blew right through this and then it, it formed a new high for the, the year. Same thing happened back here in 2019, formed a new high, corrected down on the RSI, then pushed up higher and then consolidated sideways for a new range for an extended period of time, about 372 days, 372 days. So sure, there could be more gains in the short term for a lot of these projects. Like for example, Chainlink, you know, if we come back down to back test this range of, you know, 10 bucks, $9 as support, as Bitcoin draws down, if Bitcoin goes down to 30K, you know, I'd expect Chainlink to sell off. I'd expect XRP to sell off, Ethereum to sell off, the whole markets would sell off and we would find a new support. Where would that support be? Well, the most likely support on the bearish scenario would be the previous range high of the resistance. And so you can see a lot of these projects resistance, very, very simple. If you look at multiple points of rejection, you know, the more that there's more rejection points there are, the stronger the resistance or the stronger the support. And so if we look right here for, for Chainlink, this is what it would look like continuing the rest of the bull run. Correction down, then a massive push up before Bitcoin's having, sell off into Bitcoin's having, consolidation for an extended period of time, then six months after Bitcoin's having, leading into end of 2024, going into 2025, then we really start to rip past the all-time highs. That's what I'm expecting just because that's the most likely case scenario from the past. Now, another thing that's interesting to look at is Bitcoin compared to the S&P 500, the decoupling that's taking place. Because when we saw you know, Bitcoin rally out from the lows, we saw the S&P 500 seeing a sell-off while Bitcoin was rallying up. And now that uh, Bitcoin you know, rallied up and is seeing a correction right now, the S&P 500 is, is rallying. So we see the S&P shooting up as Bitcoin's dropping down. So the decoupling is happening in the stock market as investors are starting to realize that crypto is the, it, not necessarily crypto, but blockchain and distributed ledger technology is the future. And a lot of these, these stocks and these companies that are on the stock market are starting to realize that. So when the stock market's doing, doing well and crypto's not doing well, then they pump that liquidity up in the stock market and then they're going to get ready to move it over into the crypto market as well too. And we look right here on the S&P 500, we see this rising wedge formation. Okay. So this rising wedge formation where you see higher highs, higher lows, and it's just kind of coiling up. And then we see a break. The most likely case scenario is a break to the downside, followed by a retest of the former support acting as new resistance and a continuation to the downside. And so could we see something like that happen for the S&P 500, where we see a, 
a break of this descending resistance right here, or descending, ascending support, sorry, ascending support. And then we see this rally up to back test the support as resistance, and then a continuation to the downside. Could that be what's going to happen? Well, look at the RSI. The RSI is sitting at 67. We could push up higher. We could get upwards of 70 to 80, potentially even 90 on the RSI as the S&P rallies up. If Bitcoin continues to sell, sell down, and this is the last rally for the stock market. Could this happen? This would trip me out if this were to happen. Then we were to see this liquidity come out of the stock market and flow into Bitcoin. And then we see like some CBDC news start popping out, ETF approvals, all that stuff take place. And BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, has made headlines with its application for the spot Bitcoin ETF. You know, the application, you know, has obviously been awaited uh, to get approved by the SEC. But BlackRock just said that USDT and USDC, the stable coins pose risks to Bitcoin. You know, this is not new or breaking or just in news because the disclosure about a perceived stablecoin risk was already included in the S1 form filed with the SEC that a lot of people overlooked. But everyone's known that about USDT. That's an that's a black swan potential event, right? Just like when you look at the uh the planet and you see how, you know, like Yellowstone could erupt or an asteroid could could hit, or hey, we could destroy the planet, or anything could happen at any moment. We're like, you know thousands of years due for a, uh, a cataclysm and the return of Christ and all that stuff happening. Well, there's tons of different things that could happen in the crypto market for a black swan event as well, too. I mean, you look at the Federal Reserve and what they've done with interest rates. You look at how much global debt is out there. You look at how bad, not just the United States is struggling as a country, but look at other countries out there. Like China is absolutely getting wrecked financially as well, too. And China is a powerhouse, too. So every country is is under stress right now. And so you look at the macro macrocosm of the universe and then you see the stress that's caused on the currencies, the stress that's happening in the crypto market. Something's got to give and that's how we get to the next level. And so what's going to happen at that next level? Well, let's talk about this because Eric Baltunas, he posted that he's up in his odds to a 75% spot Bitcoin ETFs launching this year, 95% by the end of 2024. Well, they factored in grayscale went into their previous 65% odds. The unanim unanimous and decisiveness of ruling was beyond expectations and leaves the SEC with very little wiggle room to make a decision. And so eventually they're going to have to approve it. <clears throat> How can you have a futures ETF and not a spot ETF? You know, it doesn't just doesn't make any sense. As expected, the SEC has delayed its decision on all seven applications. And you can see the deadlines right here coming up, right? November 21st for global X Bitcoin trust, like they're not gonna give that one the first mover's advantage. They most likely give, you know, ARC, iShares, BlackRock, Van Eck, you know, one of the bigger companies. Uh, and then you can see the third deadline, right? November 11th, that passed, January 15th. So January 15th is the main date to look for. And then at the latest, the final deadline, January, February, March, April of 2024 for the final one right there. So by Bitcoin's halving, right? So from January until Bitcoin's having, we'll most likely see these ETFs get approved, whether they all get a blanket approval, um, they get one by one or within the same week. We'll see what happens there, but eventually they will get approved and that will affect the markets. Now, be careful because the, the charts show the news first rather than the actual fact, right? Because people are buying the rumors of this happening. And then when the ETFs actually get approved, that's when we can maybe see a sell off. So I'm going to be bearish when the approval happens at that moment for a little bit. You know, I'm bullish when news pops because you know how the psychology works, the psychology of a market cycle, because you've been subscribed to our channel and watching our videos. But when that actually happens, then be on the cautious side of things because you're going to see this happen. And this is my prediction. I could be 100% wrong here again, but I like to give some predictions and see, just see what happens. But because BlackRock, you know, controls a lot of the media and they put a lot of information out there to the media companies. The media companies all start saying the same things. So we saw that fake news narrative of those, you know, anchors all reading the script of the um, the fake news thing. And then the, whoever edited that did a genius job of putting it all together. The sharing of biased and false, false news, news has, has become, become all, all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same things that we aren't true without checking facts first. first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms, platforms to push their, their own personal, personal bias and agenda, agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 
Well, the scripts get put out to all of the media companies, and what do they start talking about? Crypto, Bitcoin, it's an amazing time to be getting into Bitcoin. Then we start to see the charts going crazy. Everyone starts jumping in. Then the moment that you start to see that happen, and everyone's talking about it at the dinner table, you know, at holidays, at birthdays, whatever festivity you guys get together for, for your families, once that starts happening, then that is the time to be getting out of the markets. That's when I'm going to be taking profits and getting out of the markets when everyone's talking about it, right? We've been in these markets when nobody cared. People thought we were losers. People thought we were idiots. And they still do. And that's the best part, right? Is because you got to be called an idiot in order to become wealthy at times when you're investing. Because who is cool investing down here, right? Well, obviously you are. But when you look at charts like this, and then you try and explain it to someone, and they are like, dude, this is down 90, 95%. You're like, I know. And you're excited because you're like, that's why we're going to get wealthy because nobody cares. That's why, right? What do the 99% do? What does the 1% do? Why, why do the rich get richer and the poor get poor? It's easy. It's easy to understand this, but the challenge here is to actually do it, right? And to challenge your emotions to while you do it and not fall prey to your emotions of the euphoria and the greed because what does the 1% do? They do the opposite of what the 99% does. What does the 99% do? The 99% are idiots. They buy up here, right? And hey, I've been there plenty of times, okay? I've, I've been an idiot. I still am sometimes, you know? I'll, I'll see a project, you know, rally up and sometimes I'll, I'll buy in and I'll see it cracked. I'm like, ah, I could have waited for a correction right there. So you gotta be patient long-term either way. So if you're buying a rally right now of a project and you're seeing it correct down 5, 15, 20% for a smaller market cap altcoin and you're like, uh, and I got to hold this one for a long period of time. That's the way that the game works. But at least, you know, you're buying down here rather than buying up here for a lot of the projects that you're bullish on. Because imagine buying something and having to wait a year to go to the bottom just to even break even. To be, even break even, you might be having to be waiting, wait another year, year and a half before you even get back up to the all time high for a lot of these. So right now is the perfect time to be learning about the markets. It's the perfect time to be backing up the truck all the way, the bank grabbing the bags, packing them and stacking them, leaving no bags left behind because we believe that the spending power of the dollar is going down in value. That's a fact based on inflation, blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology, and cryptocurrencies are going up in interest. That's the truth. And together, you know where we're going. We're going camping on the beaches of the moon. I'll see you on the next video. I'll see you on bullrunners.com where you'll discover our top cryptocurrency gems and proven strategies to make money online without any previous trading experience. All you gotta do, click the button guys, Put in your best email address. You know the deal. We're going to give you breaking updates before the algorithm can push them to you. So I'll see you on the next video. I'll see you on bullrunners.com. Stay bullish.